Halo Infinite's rumored BTB 2.0 mode is getting a lot of buzz recently, so I wanted to take a look at what makes BTB great and why BTB 2.0 could be even better. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the conversation of BTB 2.0 is starting to come back around again as people are getting excited about these new infinite development updates. Some external sources have been kind of confirming that BTB 2.0 is happening and it's going to be really awesome. So in this video, we're going to take a nice deep dive look into what this leak is and what it means for Halo and why BTB 2.0 sounds so appealing to us Halo players. So if you guys like these news and informational videos, Make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. Make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. We're going to break this video down into three parts, essentially, of what makes BTB so great, the leak information itself, what Bungie tried to do to play around with it, and then the third part, what that could look like for Halo Infinite. So this first part, we're going to take a look into what makes BTB so great? So to start off, obviously it's a first person shooter. So you need awesome guns to make this game mode, well, fun and functional. So you need really good, awesome gunplay. You need weapons that work at long range and also at close range as well. But you also don't want your long range weapons to be lasering people across the map, making it really hard to traverse the map, making so they have to design the maps in certain ways, which a lot of cover, which makes it cluttered, making it more intensive on the system for designing graphics and visual fidelity, as well as also maybe diluting the long range weaponry. For example, take a look at the map Blood Gulch, right? In CE, it plays out super well. It's very fun. Halo 2, it's also fun. Halo 3, they actually kind of got rid of it for Valhalla, but they brought it back for Halo Reach. Halo Reach, the bullet travel speed on the weapons, for especially the DMR, is so fast, it's almost instantaneous when it comes to the bullet travel, making the Forge World version of Blood Gulch in Halo Reach being really unplayable. The same kind of thing happened with H2A as well, with the bullet travel speed being so fast that traversing the map made it so much more difficult and people really stayed to the outside edges of the map, never really bothered with the middle part at all. That's why I've always felt that like Halo 3's BTB mode was always the best because I had that slower bullet travel. So then you had to lead your shots, making it more difficult to hit shots at range. But when you're in close range, the weapon felt pretty smooth and it kind of still carried over that same kind of skills tactics that you learned from the fundamentals of Halo, which we'll get into a little bit here. We also talked about map design, awesome maps specifically designed for BTB, which we've had previously, except for Halo 5, have really been a key aspect of what makes BTB so great. You need to have a large scale map that plays well with certain types of game modes, as well as making sure that the map itself plays well on foot, as well as in vehicles, because you don't want your vehicles feeling so combined and just like they're constantly hitting walls the whole time. They also don't want some wide open, crazy flat plane that where people on foot would just get absolutely annihilated. One thing I think 343 could utilize, which I will talk about later in this video, is taking part of a larger map and taking a segment of that and making it part of a smaller map. So with Call of Duty recently, they had their large scale kind of BTE like mode. And what they did for a lot of those maps, they actually took out sections of that map, put some borders around it, and then basically made that work well for their smaller game modes as well, which is something the 343 could definitely do with BTB. Of course, BTB wouldn't be the same without awesome vehicle play. This is the chance where you can play in multiplayer and jump into like a Warhog or some other kind of fun vehicle and work with your friends to play around and just blow stuff up. You can't really do that a whole lot with your standard 4v4 gameplay, which I would say Halo is mainly known for, but BTB style things really expands on that. But the great thing about BTB is that not only does every large scale maps, modes and vehicles, but also just that the fundamentals of Halo are still present. You can still carry over your skills that you learned from the 4v4 mode, bring it over to the BTB mode and it still you know, feels rather Halo. But the way of having to pace your shots, having to move around, still having to utilize your strafe and different kinds of pieces of cover, the fundamentals are still there. So it's not a huge jump going from small scale to large scale modes. Now, the whole reason why people are talking about BTB 2.0 is because the known insider Clubro, who actually did leak out previously about the grapple shot and the continuous cinematic shots that we've seen previously, he said this saying, I know there won't be a battle royale mode. To my limited knowledge, instead, the team is creating a BTB 2.0 mode, which is a better fit for Halo, including massively enhanced vehicular combat, squad spawning, and incoming 
Elegant drops, and many more surprises. Now this is a leak, so take it at its word, but BTB 2.0 basically means that he knows that 343 is working on a large scale mode that has vehicles, probably squad spawning and pelican drops. Bungie themselves actually tried to do the BTB 2.0 kind of mode back in the day with Halo Reach for the game mode called Global Battle. In that mode, it was a absolutely massive map with vehicles, gunplay, and it was basically, it was humans versus Covenant in a way for that one. I have a feeling that mode kind of got shrunk down into Invasion, but even back in 2010, you know, Bungie was trying to make something special with a BTB like mode. Obviously we do not have playable elites in Halo Infinite so we won't be having any kind of species to play as. We'll be playing as Spartan so a BTB 2.0 would be more like what we're probably going to see with maybe a somewhat of an influence of the global battle mode that we saw from Bungie back in the day. But what do all these different segments of like massively enhanced vehicle combat, squad spawning maps, and pelican drops play out with a BTB 2.0 mode? How accurate are they? Well, with starting off with massively enhanced vehicular combat, we do know from the gameplay demo, that one segment where Chief jumps out of the Warhog, you can actually see that the suicide grunt actually blew up the front left tire, something we've never seen in Halo. And also they brought this up similarly in the sandbox development update in January, talking about how they wanted to massively enhance the vehicle combat to make it much more dynamic. So it's not just like your vehicle is damaged, your vehicle's damage, and since it is damaged, it will be playing differently than if it was like at full health. So we'll see some new dynamics when it comes to player interaction with vehicles beyond just saying we need to stick up with a grenade, we need to blow it up with a rocket launcher. There'll be some new ways to probably uh, hurt vehicles in certain ways to make it so that they function less properly. Or maybe they have like some kind of sweet spots that will deal out extra damage which we've seen previously in other games. Now, squad spawning is going to be something very interesting to see if Halo can pull this off. Uh, traditionally, squad spawning wasn't, was still there actually, um, especially in Halo CE, where basically you just spawn next to your teammate within a map. Now, obviously, the CE's spawn system was made like within a week, it doesn't exactly function very well, but we've always had some form of squad spawning, but generally what you do with the spawning in Halo is that you have one team is generally on the other side of the map, they try to place you near your team, but uh, you know on the opposite side of where the other team is, just to kind of give you some breathing room for your spawn point. But when you hear squad spawning, you're definitely thinking, I choose my friend, I spawn on them. The only games I've seen that feature available in are game modes with massive maps, like Call of Duty round war that we had previously for modern warfare and especially known in the battlefield for their massive maps large scale modes because the reason why you have squad spawning is because the map is or the play area is so large that to try to ask a player to traverse the whole map just to get into the battle is a big ask and really slows down the pace of the game that you want to have for it so if halo has squad spawning like spawning on your teammates like in battlefield you can expect some very large game modes though so there are two big flaws i say with squad spawning one being that people can just pop into existence when it comes to playing the game when it's a little less immersive i ran into this issue a lot when i played battlefield 3 a lot where people just spawn on a teammate while you're in the middle of a gunfight someone will just spawn up right behind them and then take you out because well they had immunity frames while spawning in they see that you're out of bullets you kill them really easily very frustrating situation recent games have been able to put in like the hey players in danger can't really spawn on them but that can be rather frustrating to wait on just because of if you're especially playing on solo saying you need to spawn, up, spawn on a squad mate that's like in a really good position they seem to step back for like five seconds and they just don't do that there needs to be a way to kind of indicate like hey someone's trying to spawn on you back off so they can spawn on you kind of situation a big issue also with squad spawning is that one player can easily turn into three players and with halo Teamwork is way more important than saying like your quick kill modes like you see like in Battlefield and Call of Duty where one player can take out four guys pretty easily. In Halo, it's, if it's a one on four, that one guy is going to lose. Well, how do you limit the spawning for squad spawns as well with also being accessible but also not overpowered because one guy can get a flank, have his rest of the squad spawn on him, and then you have like a massive change in direction when it comes to gameplay. And we touched on this earlier in the video talking about map design. The thing with having such a large scale mode, right, means that there will probably be less maps in the map pool for this mode. Depending on the size of it, we can see two to three maybe even just one map but with a limited pool you need a very good variation when it comes to the maps designs themselves 
They need to be visually different in art style and also in gameplay. Could we have such a large mode with like 150 players in it and we only have like one map? That could be very likely as it does seem to be a much more popular thing recently in shooters to have a huge scale mode but only have like one, maybe two maps. I mean Apex Legends has 60 player lobbies and they only have three maps. Though Modern Warfare did have actually a ra rather large scale BTB kind of like mode with Ground War, I think they had like 100 some odd players or 70 some odd players or something like that. I think they equated to about five or six different kinds of maps in there. So, but I don't think 3 for 3 exactly has the same kind of resources as like Activision and Infinity Ward do. So I could probably see like maybe like two, maybe three maps depending on the size of the mode itself. We're talking gigantic scale, right? Like 150 player lobbies. Probably just one map, to be honest. Next section, we're talking about the Pelican Drops. Obviously, this sounds like some form of supplies coming during the match. Now, I think there are three different ways that 343 could go about doing Pelican Drops within a BTV 2.0 mode. One being them being contested resources. So having them being drops like in the middle of the map saying, hey, Pelican Drops in, get those resources. And so then people have to fight over them. Kind of giving that traditional feel you've had like in 4 Reform or just classic Halo in general where you have to win these battles to earn these resources but in btb that might not play out super well because you might have like 20 people fighting for the rocket launcher or something like that to where it'd be just like complete cluster and it almost just becomes more of a battle of attrition rather than a battle of skill if you know what i mean but another way they could go about doing this is having it spawning at the base so at the base it was like the battlefield series power weapons in that game are like tanks and different kinds of vehicles those tanks and vehicles spawn at the base and they spawn in like every three minutes or something like that similar in the way of halo works and so if they just spawn at the base so you die spawn back at base grab like a rocket launcher that recently just came up or something like that or a sniper rifle go back out into battle that's one way they could go about doing it a third way here is kind of a blend of spawning at the base as well as bringing back a field that we had back in Halo 5 with the rec system is by going to these certain kind of terminals or some kind of locations in the map specifically they may need to control to where you can call in different kinds of resources for you to utilize within the battle we do know that the campaign is going to have like these forward bases where they're going to be kind of like set up to where like if you take over that base that's a new place where you can trade out your resources and your loadout to get some new stuff to put onto your character, some like new weapons, vehicles, grenades, and things like that. Could we see a similar feature come into the multiplayer with Pelican Drops needing to be taking over like certain kinds of bases? Almost kind of similar to what we had in Halo 5? Highly likely. But what are your thoughts on the BTB 2.0? Do you think it'll be great for Halo? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys have been out of the loop for the last few days or so or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos on Halo right there if you missed anything so thank you so much for watching greatly appreciate it and i'll catch you on the next one peace out